Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Chet Hamill uh, uh, from the St. Louis or Washington University in St. Louis, and uh, today I'm talking about hepatic artery infusion pump for the treatment of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. I don't have any disclosures that are relevant. Um, so the rationale for liver-directed therapy in intrahepatic cholangio stems from the fact that the liver has a dual blood supply, um, and the tumor derives most of its blood supply from the hepatic artery system, um, and the portal system uh, supplies blood that uh, helps the normal liver survive. In addition, um, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is often locally advanced when it uh, presents but not metastatic. And we have several modalities that can take advantage of the, the dual blood supply of the liver, including transarterial chemoembolization, transarterial radioembolization, and hepatic arterial infusion pump uh, delivered chemotherapy. And I think you'll hear about all of these today. Um, as I said, I'm focusing on hepatic artery infusion pump. So this is some of the background uh, research that made us realize that um, you know, treating tumors in the liver through the hepatic artery was feasible. Uh, this paper in 1987 looked at the amount of uptake um, in the tumor when chemotherapy was infused through the hepatic artery and through the portal vein and compared it to the normal liver. And if you look, when um, chemotherapy is infused through the hepatic artery, you get pretty decent levels in the tumor um, as compared to the portal vein where you get very, very low levels in the tumor and pretty equivalent levels in the liver. So this gave us the, the background for the idea of treating tumors in the liver through the hepatic artery. Um, this study was done with FUDR, which uh, has a, a, an excellent first pass liver uptake. Um, and this also allows it to not have significant uh, systematic effects because once it uh, does its first pass through the liver, um, you know, not much of it gets out systemically. This uh, study in 1983 looked at different chemotherapy agents and, and um, studied how much of an effect you had in the liver as compared to systemically. And you'll see, the, uh, you know, the second one, FUDR, um, had a 100 to 400 fold increased exposure um, when you did a hepatic artery infusion uh, compared to a systemic infusion. And so it's kind of been the mainstay for treatment uh, using hepatic artery infusion pumps. This uh, picture shows the concept of hepatic artery infusion pump. So it's a, a pump that has a, a well that is placed uh, in the abdominal wall, and then it has a catheter that we place into the gastroduodenal artery. We divide the gastroduodenal artery. We place the tip of the catheter into that stump of the gastroduodenal artery and then tie off uh, the catheter in there. And this allows it to infuse chemotherapy directly into the hepatic artery. Uh, it requires normal uh, hepatic vascular anatomy. Um, if there's aberrant vessels, this can um, make it so that patients aren't a uh, candidate for the hepatic artery infusion pump. And then we, we at the time of surgery, make sure to uh, ligate all the surrounding vessels to make sure that none of the chemotherapy is going anywhere but into the liver. This is a relatively uh, straightforward and simple operation. So this is a study uh, that was published in 2019 uh, with data from Memorial Sloan Kettering and us at Washington University. Uh, it used hepatic artery infusion with uh, uh, FUDR in combination with systemic gemcitabine and oxaloplantin for unresectable intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. The study accrued 38 patients with unresectable non-metastatic uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Um, as I mentioned, it used a combination of the FUDR via the hepatic artery infusion pump and then systemic gemcitabine and oxaloplatin. Um, Endpoints were progression-free survival and overall survival. And the median follow-up was 30 months. This 
we started this in uh, 2013, and the data was cut off at uh, in 2019, uh, right before we published it. This is a consort diagram. So we screened 84 patients. Uh, the majority of patients that were found to be ineligible was because of distant disease. Um, 42 patients had a pump placed on the protocol. Uh, there were four patients that were ineligible for treatment, uh, usually uh, because of hyperbilirubinemia, uh, and one patient for disease progression and one for a hepatic artery dissection. Um, and that left us with 38 patients that were treated on protocol. This table summarizes the characteristics of the patients. Um, twice as many females as males. Um, you can see that this is a pretty advanced group of patients with 87% uh, of them having moderately or poorly differentiated tumors. Um, the median tumor size was eight centimeters. Um, the majority of the patients had bilobar disease and almost uh, all of them had multifocal disease. Uh, of particular importance here is the fact that half of the patients had positive lymph nodes. Patients were allowed on the study if they had lymph nodes that were positive, as long as the lymph nodes could be resected at the time of the hepatic artery infusion pump placement. Adverse events on the study, you'll notice a lot of elevated um, liver function tests um, as the primary adverse events. There were four patients that had grade four toxic events that required them to be removed from the study. Uh, one patient had portal hypertension or developed portal hypertension. Uh, two patients developed uh, gastroduodenal artery aneurysms, and one patient had an infection at the pump pocket uh, requiring that the pump be removed. This waterfall plot shows the radiographic response of the tumors. 58% uh, of the patients had a partial radiographic response, as can be shown here. Um, this table also shows that the patients that underwent resection, there were four patients uh, that we were able to take to progression after treatment with hepatic artery infusion pump. Um, it also uh, indicates the three patients that had chemo prior to entering the protocol. The majority of patients were chemo naive before entering the protocol. On the left, you can see the progression-free survival of the patients. Uh, median progression-free survival was 11.8 months, so just under one year. Um, and overall survival on the right, uh, median overall survival was 25 months, so just over two years. Uh, I think important uh, to note is that there was no significant difference in progression-free survival between the patients that had positive lymph nodes and the patients that had negative lymph nodes. Uh, the patients that had positive lymph nodes had a median progression-free survival of 11 and a half months, and the patients that had uh, no negative disease had a median progression-free survival of 14.6 months. So in, st in summary, um, using FUDR uh, via hepatic artery infusion for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma uh, in combination with systemic gemcitabine and oxaloplatin, we showed a 58% response rate. We had 84% disease control at six months. Uh, as I mentioned, four patients were converted to resectable tumors and underwent surgery. Uh, one patient, one of those patients was noted to have a complete pathological response. Um, the median pro progression-free survival was almost 12 months, and the median overall survival was just over two years uh, with pretty uh, manageable uh, toxicities. Um, I didn't talk about it in detail, but we did uh, note that there was improvement in progression-free survival and overall survival in patients with IDH1 and 2 mutations in this group. So I have a case report here as an example of one of the patients. Uh, this patient was a 60-year-old female uh, who initially presented with abdominal pain and was found to have a 10-centimeter uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma with several uh, satellite metastasis in the, in the right liver in segment four. Um, she didn't have any extrahepatic disease on PET-CT, uh, no significant comorbidities and, and normal liver function. Uh, she was a she did have a IDH1 mutation. 
This is her CT scan. You can see the large uh, primary tumor in her inferior right liver and then uh, several uh, decent sized satellite metastasis in the right liver, extending a little bit into, into the left side of the liver. So she had her hepatic artery infusion pump placed in uh, 2016, uh, underwent uh, concurrent systemic chemotherapy for the protocol and had an excellent treatment response. Um, she was treated from October of 2016 to June of 2017 uh, with no significant toxicity or dose reductions. This is her CT scan at the end of treatment. You can see a uh, pretty good um, response of the tumor um, with not much vascularity in the tumor at this time. And so, you know, after talking to her about the options, uh, she elected to proceed with a resection. Uh, we did an extended right hepatectomy with a bile duct uh, resection and reconstruction. Uh, on pathology, final pathology, she did have a 5.5 centimeter residual tumor and three separate foci with, um, of, of the satellite lesions. Uh, all the margins were negative and she had disease in one uh, lymph node. She had an uneventful post-operative course. Um, she had adjuvant therapy for six months with uh, gemcitabine and Zolota and completed all of this in April of 2018. Um, she continues to do well and is a huge advocate uh, for us. Um, and uh, this is our pedal for the cause, our big fundraiser, which uh, she's played a big role in. Thank you.